a survey by higher kind about one third of all programming related jobs listed on sites required the javascript proficiency also javascript provides the foundation for 95.1 percent of all active websites hi everyone this is shantini from edureka and in today's session we will discuss some of the javascript projects that will help you build applications on your own now javascript has definitely become one of the most essential part of web development so talking about the agenda of today's session we will first discuss the career in javascript and then we will move on and have a look at the different javascript projects such as the analog clock pick your color to do list and also shopping cart now before we begin the session don't forget to subscribe to edureka's youtube channel to stay connected now talking about your career in javascript in 2018 there were almost 34000 javascript jobs created in india itself and the number is increasing each day now javascript is definitely one of the top languages that is creating an enormous number of jobs so there's so much scope for javascript developers like you can build your own portfolio site and do freelancing projects along with the regular javascript jobs as well so with the growth in javascript jobs it may become a part of all types of industries like the finance insurance and telecommunication so talking about some of the key roles in javascript we have front end web developers now the average salary for front end developers in india ranges around 4 lakhs to 4 lakhs 50000 per annum then we also have another role as the web application developer now the average salary for web developers in india ranges around 2 lakh 80000 per annum and then we have the javascript developers so for javascript developers the average salary in india is around 4 lakh 25000 per annum another key role is the web designer now the average salary of a ui designer in india is around 5 lakhs per annum and finally we have the full stack developer so the average salary of a full stack developer in india is also around 5 lakhs per year so this was about the career growth now let's have a look at some of the projects that will definitely help you understand the scripting language better and also build your own projects now these javascript projects are divided into three basic levels so first we have the basic level then we have the intermediate and finally the advanced level and we will discuss the different levels of project and how the javascript code works so this will actually help you understand the scripting language better and also provide you with the idea to build your own applications using javascript so let's begin with the first level that is the basic level and in this level the first project that we will be discussing is the analog clock so the first project is to build a basic analog clock using the html canvas so here we will use the javascript functions to draw the clock face and then we will add numbers and add clock hands and finally start the time now for this all you need is a source code editor here i'll be using the visual studio code you can use any other editor as well Now this project will give you the output where you will get to see an analog clock in the screen itself so you will be building an analog clock that will show you the time where you will have the numbers and also the hour minute and second hands so now let's get to the code for this analog clock and how we are going to use javascript and html and build an html container in order to get a final output of our analog clock Now the first step is to create an HTML canvas for your clock. So here we have the HTML code part for our analog clock. So the first thing that we are doing is adding an HTML canvas. Now we are creating this with the canvas code and inside this we are creating our canvas and we have provided the width and height value. Here I have given the width and height to be 400 400 for my entire canvas and then you can set any background color. So with this you have just created the canvas where you will be finally drawing your analog clock and then with the help of the javascript functions you will be able to start it as well. Now here we have a variable canvas. So here we are creating a canvas object that is the var canvas from the html canvas element. So here you have your canvas that is the object and you have your document.get element by id 
and here we have taken our canvas from the HTML code. Now the next step is to create a 2D drawing object for the canvas object. So what we have done is we have taken the object as CTX and we have created a 2D drawing object. So you can see that I've mentioned it to be 2D as well and we have taken the get context so that we get the context of our canvas from this particular object and also we are creating the 2D object here. Now the next step is to calculate the clock radius using the height of the canvas. So here we are taking the radius as canvas dot height by 2. So this will provide us the radius of our entire clock here or how you are drawing the clock inside your canvas. So this is basically your clock radius. Now the next step is to remap the position to the center. So what we are doing is we are taking the translate function and here we have given the radius so that it will position your clock right at the center of your canvas. You have the canvas with the width 400 and the height 400 here. Now you just want to draw that particular circle or taking the radius of that particular circle and draw it right in the middle. So we have to just do the mapping here and position it in the center. Now what we are doing here is we are setting up the radius value here. So here I have set the radius value as radius into 0 0.90 because I'm making the radius as 90 percent so that it fits well inside my canvas instead of taking it 100 percent. Now the next thing you need to do is finally draw the face of your clock. So for that we have taken a function which is the draw face function. And inside that we have the parameters as the CTX and the radius. So the CTX is basically the 2D drawing that we created and the radius is basically with the help of which you will be drawing your circle or the body of your clock. Now here we have just started drawing our clock here with the help of the radius. We have taken the arc and we will make sure that it's mapped 0 comma 0 that is right in the center. Then we have our radius which is the radius into 0 0.90. We have set the value as 90 percent because we want the clock in the middle and also right inside the canvas itself. And here we have used the formula for drawing our circle 2 into math dot pi because this is how we are going to draw our circle with the help of the radius value that we have assigned already. Now this is all about styling. So I am taking the CTX dot fill style in order to add colors to my canvas or add colors to the circle that I've drawn. So my clock would be white in color. So I've set the fill style that is it'll fill the circle with the color white. Now the next step is to create a radial gradient. So for that we have taken the create radial gradient and inside this we have passed the parameter as 0 comma 0. Then we have the radius as 0 0.95 and then we have another parameter where the radius is 1.05. So what happens here is that we create a radial gradient which is 95 percent and 100 percent of the original clock inside. So this is just to style your original clock so that we have an outer layer and also an inside layer which will make it look like a clock at least. Then the next step is to create the three color stops corresponding with the inner middle and the outer range of your clock. So we have the three color stops here. The first one's value is 0 then we have 0 0.5 and finally we have 1 which represents the inner middle and the outer range of your clock. So we have just set the color here differently. So we will have a grayish and white color here. Now next is just defining the gradient as the stroke style of the drawing object. So these are basically setting up the width and the design of your outer and inner range of your clock or how the actual clock would look like not the complete look but definitely the radius and also the outer design of it. So here with the line width we are defining the line width of the drawing object. So here we have set it to be 10 percent of our radius. Now finally we will draw our clock center. Now for the clock center we have our arc as 0 0 radius set as 0 0.1 and then we have the 2 into math dot pi formula. Now again in order to add colors we will just take the fill style and add the color here. I've used the 333 which is the slight grayish color here. So this is all about designing the outer part or just giving the look of your circle or the outermost circle of your clock. So this is all about the designing of those parts of your clock. 
Now, once you are done drawing the clock or the shape of the clock, now the next step is to add numbers. So the next function here we have is draw numbers. So now we have a canvas and inside the canvas we have designed our clock or at least the outer part of our clock. So we have a circle drawn with the radius. Then we have set different color stops or margins around it in the inner outer and the middle range and we have set colors for them as well. Now the next step is to draw the numbers. Now in order to draw the numbers the first thing that you must do is set the font size of your drawing object. So what we are doing is we are setting the font of the numbers to be 15% of our radius. So what we have done is we have taken the CTX dot font equal to radius into 0.15 and we have used the font to be PX Arial. So what we have done is we have considered the 15% of our radius and set the font to be of that particular size. Then we have the text baseline and we have aligned our text to the middle and the center of our circle or center of our clock. This is for the baseline where we have set it to be middle and this is for our alignment and we have aligned it in the center. Now the next thing that we have to do is calculate the print position to 85% of our radius. Now we will be having 12 numbers. So what we have to do is set these 12 numbers accordingly so that they are aligned properly and also are in the equal distance from each other. So what we will do is we will set the print position to 85% of the radius and rotate it at pi by 6 for each number. Now pi by 6 for each number will make sure that we have all of these numbers in the equal distance and also we have set the 12 numbers accordingly. Now for that we have to set the angle here and the angle we have set here is the num into mat dot pi by 6. So as I said we have set it to 85% of the radius and rotated at pi by 6 value. So we have set the angle here so we have the number and also we have rotated it as pi by 6 so that we have these 12 numbers set in the position. And we are rotating it according to the angle value that we have set here. So we have used the rotate function here where we have given the parameter as the angle that we have set right here. And the next step we need to do is rotate and translate. So here we have set the rotation to the angle that we have set and also the translation to 85% of your radius. So now that it covers a 360 degree radius of it. So we have the minus and plus that is both sides of our radius. So the first one will be minus radius into 0.85 and the next one would be radius into 0.85 that is the positive value. So basically we have set it for all our quadrants. So we have the positive and negative quadrants as well. Now with this you have inserted the numbers as well. So now you have the canvas you have the outer circle or the shape of your clock and finally you have inserted all the numbers from 1 to 12 in your clock. Now the next thing that you need to do is draw the hands that is the hour minute and second hands. So this is basically drawing the time. So we are using the function draw time here. Now we have to set the hour minute and second hand. Now the first thing is to use the date function. Now how would this date function help you is it will help you get the hour minute and seconds right. So now next step is to set the hour minute and second value. So for hour we have the get hours function then we have get minutes and then we have get seconds function. So now we have to apply a little bit of math here again for the hour minute and second hand. Now for the hour hand we have to calculate the angle of the hour hand and draw it a length and a width as well. So here it will cover a 360 degree of your clock. So we have the 50% of your radius here. And we have 12 numbers that is it goes up to 12 hours of course. So for that we have the modulus set to R modulus 12. Now how do we calculate this? The formula for this would be R into math dot pi by 6 plus minute into math dot pi by 6 into 60 plus second into math dot pi by 360 into 60. So this is nothing but dividing your hour minute and second based on the time or based on the numbers that are there and also using the radius and how you're going to set the value. So for your hour you have a simple pi by 6 which is going to cover the entire 360 degree and go to the 12 numbers as well. 
for the minute we have 6 into 60 and for the second we have 360 into 60. And here we have the draw hand function where we have the radius set which will help you draw your R hand here. In the same way we also have the minute hand for which the formula would just change a little and here we have minute into math dot pi by 30 and second into math dot pi by 30 into 60. So this is just to calculate that how many seconds or how many minutes would it take. And then finally we have the second hand. So for the second we have second into math dot pi by 30. Now we all know that for 60 seconds we will have one minute and for 60 minutes we will have one hour. So it is divided accordingly and you just have to set it with the radius and do the calculation and do the math and set the formula accordingly so that with every 60 seconds you have one minute moving and with every 60 minutes you have the hour hand moving as well. Now here you have finished drawing your hour minute and second hands but what about making them work or what about seeing your second hand move every second and then your minute hand and hour hand as well. Basically what about starting your clock. So for that all you have to do is make sure that the formula that you have used for your arm in the second is started and for that you have the draw hand function where you have set the position length and width. So it basically moves your hands to this position and keeps rotating based on your position length and width that you have set here. So for that we have the stroke function and the rotate function which will make sure that your hands are moving and rotating throughout the clock according to the formula and also follow the rules where for every 60 seconds you will have the minute hand moving and for every 60 minutes you will have the hour hand moving to the next number. So with this we have finished inserting all our functions into this HTML canvas. And finally with HTML and JavaScript we are done building our analog clock here. So now we have created the canvas in the first step then we have drawn the face here with the help of function draw face. Then we have added different numbers with the help of the function draw numbers. And then we have drawn the clock and created the function to draw the basic clock. After that we have drawn the time with the function draw time and got our hour minute and second hands. And finally we have used the draw hand function in order to start your clock. So now let's just save this code and see what output does it give us. So now when I go to the website you can see that we have our first analog clock here. So this is the basic level and the first JavaScript project that we discussed about which is just to build a simple analog clock. Now let me explain you the first function was to draw the canvas. So this part is our function. So now you know why I said the radius to 95% and not 100% because if it was 100% it would cover up the entire area here. And I've just taken it 95% so that it fits well inside my canvas. So this part is my canvas here and this is the structure. Now you understand the inner outer margin and also the color that I had said. We have a white layer inside and then for both the inner and the outer circle or the margin we had used the color which is a little grayish. Then we have set the number here that is from 1 to 12 which represents the hours in a day. And then we have the three hands that we have set here our minute and your second. And finally we have started the clock. So we have set the clock duration as well. And this just helps you start your clock and you have the second hand moving and you can see that with every 60 seconds your minute hand would move that is one minute and with every 60 minutes as well your hour hand will move as well. So this was the first and the most simple project that you can create with the help of HTML and JavaScript that is building your analog clock. Now talking about the next project we have Pick your color. So now this is a color game which is also a basic level JavaScript project but it adds a little more into this level itself because here we will be using CSS as well in order to style this particular project. Now pick your color is all about creating a color game where you have to pick the right choice of color based on the RGB that is the red green blue ratio. So here we will use the CSS to style the grids and JavaScript functions to recolor those grids after each try. Now same I'll be using the Visual Studio code for this one as well. 
Now talking about the output, it will give you a color game where you have to select the color from six grids which will have different colors based on the RGB ratio that will be provided. So you just have to figure out which is the right color and as soon as you pick the right color, the game refreshes and you can go and play it again and again. So now this is an interesting one. So let's move ahead and see how to build your own pick your color game. So the first thing is your HTML file. Now here you will just create the basic structure for your color game and after you add your JS functions that is your JavaScript functions and style it you will just be adding those links here. Now talking about the HTML file the first thing is you have to set your headers that is I have set my first header to be pick your shade and we have the RGB which will represent the red green blue ratio here. And you can just add any headings that you want to add in your game to make it more attractive. So I've just written pick and play here. Now the next thing you need to do is set your six squares that you're adding right now before that you have to have buttons which will change your colors and reset your game. So for the first stripe I have the buttons set as reset which will change colors. Then I have a message then I have an easy button and then I have the selected and hard button as well. So you have two different levels which is easy and hard. So here I have added two different buttons as easy and hard which basically represents the two different levels of the game right. And then we just have to create the container for all these squares that you're creating here. So we have six squares so I've created six different class and I have inserted square here. So this is basically just creating the structure and the container for your game. So here you will just set the buttons that you want to insert and also the square boxes that you've inserted. It just gives the first and the basic step for your pick your color game. Now in the pick your color game you will have the output as six different color boxes from where you have to select the true color. So the HTML section was all about building the container and just giving the basic structure to your game. Now here we have our JavaScript code where you have all the JavaScript functions that will actually make this game work. So let's see how this works. So the first thing is to set your number of squares. So we have taken six squares. You can add eight or any number of squares as well, but six makes it look good and also easy to pick as well. Now for the colors that are to be inserted in the square, we have a function as generate random colors. So this will basically generate random colors to all your six blocks here and inside that we have the parameter as num squares because it will pass the random colors to these squares that we have set here and all of these boxes are squares. So we have to pick the color with the help of pick color function here. Now whatever color you pick would be taken with the help of this particular function. As soon as you click on one of the boxes or one of these squares. This is the function that will work here because this is the color that you have picked. Now in this game we have set the RGB code. So based on the RGB ratio you have to pick your color. Now how would you get that RGB code? So for that we have the HTML element RGB code which will initiate or generate the code or the ratio right? So for that we have taken the output as document dot get element by ID RGB code. So this will display your ratio of your red green blue color based on which you have to pick the right square. So here I have used another message display which will give the message of the color that you have selected if it's right or not. So here I have set the H1. So in my HTML code I have set the H1 as pick your shape right? And here we have the reset button easy button and hard button. So in the HTML you saw that we have the structure where you can reset and you have an easy button and then you have an hard button as well. In JavaScript these elements will take the functions and the output as reset easy button and hard button. So with the help of these three elements that is reset button hard button and easy button you get these three options where you can either reset your game and then you have the easy button where you can choose the easy level of the game and here you have the hard button where you can choose the hard level of the game. Okay now the next step we do is we work with the easy button. So what happens when you click this easy button? So you have to add an event here so that as soon as you click on the easy button an event occurs. For that we have the add event listener. 
So now this is an HTML where you have passed the parameters as click and function. So what happens as soon as you click this? So as soon as you click your easy button, you are inside the easy level. So now inside this you have the function. So what happens when you click this is you remove the hard button and you select the easy button. So we have hard button dot class list dot remove selected and we have easy button dot class list dot add selected. So what happens is your game understands that you have selected the easy button. So it removes the hard button and selects the easy button so that you only have your squares as three. So in the easy button you will only have three squares from where you have to pick the color. And the colors generated will be random colors and with the help of your pick color function it will select the color that you have picked out of those three. So now what happens when you select the wrong color. So for that we have set this for loop here which will basically not pick the color that you have taken and if it's wrong so it will consider the style and the color not matching. So it will just leave the other two options for you and from where you can pick the right color. Now moving on to the hard button. So what happens when you click the hard button? It goes inside this particular function removes the easy button and selects the hard button where your number of squares will be six. So as soon as you go to the hard level of your game you have six squares to pick your color from. Same thing it will generate random colors inside your squares and with the help of the pick color function it will take the color that you have opted for. Now in case you have selected the wrong color it will block that particular square and you will have the remaining squares to select the right color from. Now what if you want to reset your game suppose you don't like the colors that you see so you just want to reset and get new colors to pick from. So for that you have the reset button. Now what happens if you select the reset button for that we have created another event here. So once you click this button the function generates all new colors. So for that we have generate random colors and again we pick a new random color from the array and then with this we change the color display to match picked color. Now again we have the for loop to change colors of these squares. So now in order to reset all of these you just take this for loop and add initial colors to your squares and add the click listeners to squares. And again we have another event created here for your square eye that will have all these six squares inside and you can just grab color of picked square and finally compare color to the picked color and check if the value is correct or not. Now if your clicked color is equal to your picked color that is if you have picked the right color you will have a message displayed which will say good job. And along with that you will also have another message which will say play again. This play again is basically the reset button again. So as soon as you click on play again the entire game will be reset and you will have new colors to pick from. So once you click play again it will again change the colors of all of your squares and again you can go on with the process where you can pick the color based on the RGB ratio. So this is all about styling the background where we have set the color and in case you don't get to select the right color you will have another message pop up which says try again. Now with the help of this change colors function what you do is you loop through all your squares. So in the hard level if you have six squares you loop through all of them. So you can see that in the for loop you have your i value as zero and i less than square dot length. So if you're in the easy level your square length would be three and if you're in the hard level it will be six. So you go to each of these squares loop through all of them and change each color to match the given color which is there in your RGB ratio. And how your pick color function works is we have a random element where you have your math dot random into colors dot length. So you pick any random color which will be matched with the color that is provided in the RGB ratio and then you will have your picked color matched with the given color. Now how do we generate these random colors? We have been seeing that we have used the random generate colors in all of these sections in order to reset or take any levels and get all of these squares with different different colors. But how does this work? So we have the function generate random colors. So here what happens is we take an array and generate different colors to each of these arrays which are actually the squares. 
so we have a variable array with random numbers so here we will just add random colors to the array so our array starts from 0 and it's less than the num i plus plus num represents the number of squares that we have and with array dot push random color we get random color and push into the array which provides different or random colors to each of your squares now as soon as you have pushed each of these color into the array you need to return the array so we have return array and this will just give you the random colors in your squares now talking about the rgb ratio so we have random colors here definitely but we also have a definite rgb ratio and you need to pick the color based on that ratio how do we figure that out so for that we have used this particular math function and set for each red green and blue so for that we have a range of 0 to 255 for the red and again another 0 to 255 for green and the same for blue so for the first red that is r it picks any random value from 0 to 25 same for green and same for blue and it will just give you an rgb ratio based on which you have to figure out which color is the closest to the actual value right and it will return the values for rgb so you'll get a ratio where you'll have three different values and considering these values you have to select the right color now if the ratio of your r value is more you have to pick a color which is more inclined towards red and if it's in the green side you have to go for something which is a little greenish or if it's blue you have to select something which is blue right so that's the logic behind this game so this was all about using your javascript functions and how you can actually make all your buttons and all your squares work and how you pick a random color how it is compared with your original rgb value how the rgb code is set and what messages are displayed now let's just style this game a little for that we have the css so here we will be using the css code in order to add a little more styling to each of these sections or each of these elements of our game now talking about the styling it all depends on you or how you want this game to look like because it's your game your project and you can style it the way you want it to so the first thing to style is the body that is the entire structure or the background of my game right so i have set the background color here you can set your background color based on your preferences and how you want it so here i have set the shade somewhere around black or it's a little dark that way you can pick any color the font that i've used here is sans serif and also the font weight is normal and the text is in uppercase right so next up are my squares so for the square we have the width as 30 percent for each square that is what i've set my width of each square i have kept the background as white for each of these then we have the padding at the bottom we have the margin value border radius you can set all of these to anything or any color or any margin or width that you want to styling is all on you and you're free to style it the way you want your game to look right so here i have given the color white to my header one as well and i have set the background color to be something like teal or greenish then we have the stripes and we have the selected options now the rgb code font size i've set it to 200 percent and finally we have the buttons now for the buttons i've selected this specific color i've given certain letter spacing here and i've made it all uppercase use the font as sans serif this button hover is when you hover around any particular button like if you go to the easy level and hover on that button it will change to the color white and your message will be displayed in inline block and your width is 20 percent so this is nothing much but just styling each function or each block of your code so you can style it based on how you want it to look like you can add any background color any border color any margin that'll make it look a little better so this completely depends on you and what colors you want to add or what are your favorite colors so this is not about setting up the colors for your squares or anything this is just setting up the basic structure and styling your basic structures that is how would the header look like how would the box look like or how would the background look like in your game right so this was the css part of the code that i've introduced here in the analog clock we didn't have any styling we just had a basic HTML structure or an HTML container inside which we added all our JavaScript functions. 
here we have the HTML container where we have all the classes and the squares and the buttons that we have inserted here in JavaScript code. We have all these functions working it out for the game and a little bit of styling with the help of CSS. So now let's see what is the final output and how does our color game actually looks like. So here you can see that this is my color game. So now you can understand that what are the colors that I've set. I've set the background to be towards the black and blue mix. So it's more of a dark color and here I've set this steel bluish color and about the headings I had set all the colors to be white uppercase and all the fonts that I had set here. So you can see the width and the font size everything according to the styling that I had done in the CSS right. Now you can see that you have these options as change colors which is basically the reset button. Then you have two sections you have easy and you have hard. Now this is the hard section where you have six squares for the easy section or the easy level of the game. You have three boxes to select from now. How do we do this? So let me pick this color. So as soon as you pick the right color, you can see that the color changes to the picked color and also you have another option popped up here, which is good job play again, which means you can reset the game and you have new colors popped up here again. So let's go to the hard section and see. So in the hard section you have six squares to pick your color from. Now what happens if I select the wrong color? So what if I pick this color? So you can see that as soon as you pick the wrong color, this particular block is removed. You can't select this anymore, right? And the message popped up here is try again. So you can pick another shade. So now let's pick this shade. So even this one is wrong. So now we have to pick another color. Now let's pick another square. Now you can see that I've selected the right square finally and as soon as I've selected the right option and my picked color has matched with the original color. It changes the color to what it is and it gives me the message as good job. So you can see that with the help of your HTML JavaScript and CSS you could create this nice game called as the pick your shade or pick your color game. And it's quite fun where you just get to pick the right colors based on the red green and blue ratio. And with our color game we have come to the end of our basic level. So in the basic level we have seen two different projects that is the analog clock and the pick your color. In analog clock we had created a very basic analog clock with the help of HTML canvas and JavaScript functions. In the second one we saw how to create a game with the help of HTML CSS and JavaScript. HTML helped you build the entire structure or the container and JavaScript added all the functions that you needed to make your game work and CSS was all about styling and making your game look a little better. Now we will move on to the next level which is the intermediate level. So in this one we will be creating a to do list that will help you keep a track of the works that you need to finish or whatever task you have for the entire day. You can create a to do list and keep a track or remember whatever work you have to do. So in this project we will create a to do list that will work as a reminder for all your pending tasks. Now for this one as well I'll be using the visual studio code only and you would need HTML CSS and JavaScript codes. Now this project will help you create your own to do list and also list out all your pending tasks and the work given to you for the day. So let's see how you can use the HTML CSS and JavaScript code together in order to build this to do list. So this is the HTML code for your to do list which will help you build the container or the basic structure of your project. So first we are building the class container which will give the basic container or the structure for the list that you're going to create and then you will add another row and you will have an intro column that is where you can introduce all your tasks that you're going to add right. So now in this row you will have a first second third field. So the first field is to enter text into the input field to add items to your list. The second one would be to click the item to mark it as complete and the third task is to click the X to remove the item from your list. So you will basically have a cross where you can remove the item. So these are the three things that will be there. First you can enter the text into the input field which will have your item and that will be added in your list. Now once you have done that task you can click the item and mark it as complete. And finally if you want to remove it you can click the cross button as well. 
now for this particular row where you will be inserting your input we have the input id as user input the type as text and the placeholder is in the new item so you will have a section where you will be adding all your new items so this is the place this is the placeholder where you will be inserting the text and the maximum length of your text can be 27 you can set it to any length that you want to and then you have the button where you enter so you have this button with the help of which you can enter the text you have given so this code is all about creating your list and also the input button so this is just the basic structure with the help of html and it gives you the container where you are going to create this project so now let's move on to the javascript code for your to-do list project and see how the different functions actually help you to make this work now we have certain objects like the enter button which is the button that will help you enter the text that you have to add in your list for that you have the enter button here then you have the input where you have the user input or the text that you're actually providing in html we saw that user input type is text and it's in the placeholder new item and the length is 27. then we have the document in the ul that is the unordered list so it's not ordered you can change the order as well it's not numbered so you can just keep adding the tasks that you want to now the first function is the input length so this will return the input dot value dot length so it will just return the input that you have provided and also the length you have given the length to be 27 maximum and it should be within that range then you have the list length function where you have the length of your item now the next function is to create the list element so what happens here is that you have an element li now this creates an element li here with document dot create element and in this you append the child so it makes your text from the input field to the li field which means that as soon as you write something or add a task in your input field and press the enter button it goes into the list so li represents the list of items and here we have the unordered list so you have ul dot append child li so basically the list of item is added which is unordered and your input value will be reset every time you keep on adding items in the input field right now this function is mostly used for striking through or once you are done with that particular task so you have the start strike through where you have the function cross out and once you have completed this task you can strike it out and consider it to be done so here for the strike through we have just added an event which is add event listener and inside that as soon as you click on that particular item it takes the cross out function which means that that particular task is completed or it is done and so here ends the strike through as well the next thing is to start the add delete button now what happens here is you have a delete button which is basically the cross that we have used as the x so as soon as you click on that X, it means that your task is completed and you're removing it from the list. Even if it is not completed, you want to remove it from the list. So for that, we have the delete button. So here we have this particular button and we have the cross sign. So now inside the list, as soon as you click on the delete button, we have to add this event where as soon as you click on it, it deletes that particular item from the list. So this was about the delete button. Next we have the class delete or it shows that how the delete function actually works. So here we have used this delete list item. Now what is this? So for this we have a function known as the delete list item inside which we take the list of item inside your class list and delete this particular item from your list or delete this particular task from your list. Now here we have a condition if input length is greater than zero create list item. Now this actually helps you in not creating a list which does not contain any values. So if you just don't write anything and press enter it should not create a list. So this will not create an empty list or anything you need to have a value. So here we have the input length as greater than zero. Now next is add list after key press. Now there are two things you can do once you have written your task that is to be added in the list. You can just click on the enter button or you can just press enter through your keyboard. So for the enter in your keyboard we have this add list after key press. So the event here is that as soon as you press the enter key it should take the item inside that list. So for that if input length is greater than zero 
and even dot which equal equals 13 you create the list element now what is this equal equal 13 so 13 is basically the key code for your enter key in the keyboard so the condition states that if the input length is greater than zero that is you have added some pending task and you have pressed the enter key which is equal equal 13 your list will be created and that particular task will be added in your list so for that we have two different events here one is for the enter button where you just have to click on the enter button and add it to the list or you can just press the enter key and add it to the list as well so this was the javascript functions that helps you create the to-do list you don't have to do much you just have to make sure that you have entered a valid list or a valid task for your list of items or the list of tasks that are to be done and it should be greater than zero that is your input field value or the input length value should be greater than zero so that it does not end up creating an empty list now again the next section is all about styling your to-do list or how you want that list to look like so you can add different background colors you can add text colors you can make them look different you can add the width and length of your input or the border or the section we are actually adding the list into anything you can color them into different colors radius border width margin all that you want to do with your to-do list or how you want to style it actually so I have created a hover color so what happens when I hover the mouse on any button and how the color changes so the list button has this particular color font width and everything that I wanted to set up for the output to look good so I've set the input border radius here padding and border then as soon as you click on the done or when you have completed the task what happens it changes to green which means that the task is no more pending and it has been completed and you can add any other color to your text so as soon as you delete it what happens it displays that the list is gone and you remove the list and it does not display anything so once you delete that particular task is gone from your to-do list so these are a little bit of styling that you need to do to make your output look better so you can set different colors or different margins that you want you can add up any sort of styling in your program so in the HTML section we had first second and third which is to enter the text and then click the item and click the X to remove the item from your list these are all the headings that I have in my program or in my output so I've styled them accordingly. I've given them different text colors in order to make them look better. So styling depends on you and how you actually want it to look like. So you can do that according to your preferences. So now that we are done with this, let's see how our final output looks like. So this is my to do list where I have work to do. And you can see that this is the first, second and third section I was showing where we have the first as enter text into the input field. And we have the click the item to mark it as complete and finally the click the X to remove the item from your list. Now this is my enter button here when I hover on it it takes a different color. So now you can add anything. So let me just add a task for myself. Suppose I have to write pick up clothes. So you can see that as soon as I have entered something which has the length greater than zero it takes the input inside the list. Now once I hover on it you can see the color changing and now if I mark it it means that I have finished my task and the color changes to green. Now I can also click on this cross and the item will be gone which means that I've deleted it from my list. Now let's add a list of items. So let's just write order lunch first task. Now let's add another task finish projects. So you can see that you can add a number of items here so it's unordered list so you do not have any order you can finish the tasks based on your preferences or you can do it according to your wish as well. So now if I have finished this it turns into green and then I can also remove it from the list. So this is another very simple example of creating a to do list that will help you keep a track of your everyday tasks. And with the help of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you can build your own to do list, right? Now this was just my version of to do list. You can build it however you want to. You can add different functions to it in, with the help of JavaScript. You can style it accordingly with the help of CSS 
and HTML will definitely provide the basic container for it. So now we have covered the basic and the intermediate level and now that you've understood how JavaScript HTML and CSS work together to help you build JavaScript projects or any sort of websites or web application. Let's move on to the final level which is the advanced level. Now in this advanced level project we will be creating a shopping cart with a number of items. So this will provide the price of each item and you can also add or remove these items from your cart. Now the first step is to create our HTML structure and for that we would need a container div which will be our shopping cart. Now inside this particular container we will have a title and three items which will include two buttons that is the delete and the favorite button. Then we will have the product image product name and description and the buttons that will adjust quantity of products and finally the total price. So this is the HTML section. So first we have the shopping cart division where we have given a title as shopping bag. Inside this shopping bag we will have the different items. So I have the product one for which I have the delete and like button. So either you can remove the item from your list or you can just add the like button in order to show that this is your most favorite product right. Now here you will be adding the image. So I have taken certain images and saved them with the name as item one item two and item three of my products. So here you can just add that particular image. So whatever image you're adding to your shopping cart. You can save it with a particular name and then source it here. Then you can write the description here in this description class. So for the first one I have inserted the picture of a maroon t-shirt and I have given the description where you can write either the company name the type of t-shirt and mention the color. That all depends on you on how you want to show or provide the description of your particular product. Now next we have the quantity class where you can select the plus button or the minus button. So with plus button the number of items will be increased. So for the first product if you select the plus button it will become two items and if you click on the minus it will become zero that is that product will be removed from your cart. The next class is of the total price where you will be mentioning the total price so you can specify the total price of your item. Here it will show the price for each item that are present in your shopping cart. In the same way you can add a number of products. So I have added two more products here and in the same way I have specified the button types. I have given the description and an image of the products that I have added and also finally the total price of each of these product. So this was all about the HTML part or building the basic structure of our shopping cart. Now we will have a look at the JavaScript part. Now talking about this project here we are using this jQuery file where you will have a different set of functions already stored in that that can be used for this shopping cart. So we are using jQuery in this particular program. Now going back to the JavaScript section of the code we have different functions. So talking about functions first we will see what happens when we click on the minus button. So we have the minus button on click. The function you have inside that is if value is greater than one your value becomes value minus one. So what happens is if you have two items in the list. So as soon as you click on the minus button it becomes one value less that is the value minus one which is two minus one which is equal to one. So your product will decrease in number here. In the same way we have the plus button. Now what happens in the plus button is that for every value or every time you click on the plus button it becomes plus one that is your product increases by one in number. And also we have set the maximum value to be hundred that is each product can be included in the shopping cart a maximum number of times that is hundred. Then we have another like button which shows that you love this product. So for the like button what happens is you click on the like button and your class is active. And we have added different images and products based on what you want to add. You can add anything in your shopping cart. I've selected three items of my choice. You can add any number of products and you just have to add the image and description for all of these. So now that we have seen how we have used the HTML and JavaScript let's get into the CSS of this particular program. So in the beginning only I told you that in this particular program we are using the Google font that is Roboto. So this is the URL from where you can get the font. 
so I've taken the Roboto font here now again the same thing it's all about styling and how you want your page to look like so I've just added background colors for my shopping cart and also how different sections would look like so here I've given a dark background and also for my heading I've given a lighter shade of background you can show the different colors for your title or how they would look like and also you can set the font size and font weight here so the styling depends on you and how you want your shopping cart to look like so here you can add uh, any width or any value any height any color for your background you can select a different font if you want to so now let's see how this output will look like and how our shopping cart actually works so this is my shopping bag that I have created and I had added three products the first one was a maroon t-shirt then a black leather jacket and then finally a woodland shoe so these are the three products that I added here and you can see that we have the price per item that is it shows the item for each of these products and here again we have the plus and minus button so if I select plus my item will increase to number two and if I click on minus it will again be one and if I click minus again it will become zero that means this product does not exist in my shopping bag anymore so about the like button so here we have the like button and as soon as you click on the like button you can see this heart getting activated this is one png that i have added so as soon as you click on it it toggles and gives us this red heart which means you like this product not just that you can also dislike that item once again so you can click on this again so you can see that you have disliked this product again again if you click it it's liked again so this is how it goes on you have the product image and you have the product description here so make sure that when you add the images they are of the same size so that it looks better and also you can add a description of your choice and also style them accordingly you can add different colors to all of these texts as well so this was about the advanced level javascript project which helped you in building a shopping cart of your own so these were the different kinds of projects from the basic level to intermediate and advanced level. So first we saw how you can build an analog clock which was the most basic one and then we created a very fun game which is the pick your color and then we had a to do list for ourselves and finally we created a shopping cart with different products of our choices. So these are some of the JavaScript projects. And I hope with these projects you have got the idea of how you can use HTML, CSS and JavaScript together in order to build any sort of project or any web application of your own. You just have to implement all of these functions and different styling process and creating your HTML containers and you are done with a new project of your own. So this was all about today's session. I hope you enjoyed it, but don't forget to let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.